From dancing videos to national security risks, experts say social media sensation TikTok is helping the Chinese military develop artificial intelligence. In this special report, we look at how U.S. companies are boosting China's military growth, how Americans' data is feeding China's AI mills, and how microchips are at the heart of it all. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Data has become the new oil. It's what every country is trying to get their hands on. Data has become the new strategic commodity of the 21st century. That it will be as, as important and as decisive in who is it that prevails in the, in the geopolitical contest between the United States and China, between the free world and what I call the new axis, China, Russia, Iran and North Korea. That's Arthur Herman, senior fellow at the Hudson Institute and director of the Quantum Alliance Initiative. But why is data such a big deal? Herman notes that's what fuels AI and other machine learning programs. The more data they get, the more accurate they become. And so if you've got an AI chip, which allows you to speed up the process so you can move through the data faster and faster. He mentioned the term AI chip. Microchips or semiconductors are what are found in electronics, from phones to computers to cars. But as to what an AI chip actually is... Basically what they do are they're accelerants. They accelerate the running of AI applications and machine learning programs. There are three main types. First up, graphic processing units or GPUs. Since so much of what happens with AI is about, let's say, visual recognition, uh, the, the use of graphics, the use of images. Advanced uh, graphic processing units are extremely useful for that and an important part of your, of your AI driving package. The second type are called application-specific integrated circuits. Basically what you have is the applications contained in the chip itself. In other words, you don't run the program through a series of other chips, you know, random access memory or, uh, or, or digital processing units. You're, it's, it's actually contained in the chip itself. Not just AI, but it could be other types of applications. And the third type are known as field programmable gateway arrays. It's like a blank slate. You could put in the program that you need into it so it runs that program specifically uh, when you need it uh, and when it's required. But the thing about AI chips is they aren't used exclusively for AI applications. A new report from the Center for Security and Emerging Technology at Georgetown University found that nearly all of the chips China's military ordered were designed by U.S. companies. Those companies include NVIDIA, Xilinx, now called AMD, Intel, and MicroSemi. To find those numbers, researchers scoured publicly available purchasing records from China's military, formerly known as the People's Liberation Army, or PLA. Those records stretch over eight months, from April to November 2020. The report found 97 unique high-end artificial intelligence chips ordered by the PLA. None of those came from Chinese companies. All were made in America. But in terms of military use, how does China use these chips? For the most part, the military does not use the most advanced state-of-the-art chips. What you have in your, if you have a recent model uh, iPhone or Android, that has much more sophisticated chips in, in it than go into a jet fighter, for example. David Goldman, deputy editor at Asia Times, notes. The military tends to use older chips, and it's, there are a great many out there and many ways of getting them. So for the vast majority of military applications, stopping China from buying the top-of-the-line chips is not going to make a great difference. Herman adds. In terms of an actual attack, I think it's less important than being able to understand American intentions uh, depending on what China move, kind of moves China makes against Taiwan. So in other words, what you're able to do with your AI applications, right, is to understand if we do A, how will the Americans respond? And the AI programs give you more and more accurate picture 
of how the U.S. will respond to certain types of moves. China has taken advantage of what's considered the gray area, meaning acting aggressively without crossing the line into an all-out war. For instance, sending scores of fighter jets into Taiwan's air defense identification zone. Herman notes AI plays an important role in that. And in order for the Chinese to decide about how to conduct, let's say, a low-intensity conflict of this kind, they'll want to know what are the Americans going to do. And AI programs will help them to understand what the Americans will do, how the, Ta how the Taiwan government is going to respond, how U.S. allies in the region, like Japan or like Australia, might respond in those situations. But he says it's important to know that when it comes to AI... AI is not a mysterious process. It's just another type of computing. It's another way in which you take large amounts of data, feed it into your program, into the algorithms that make up your program, okay? Uh, and then you generate pattern recognition. But given that artificial intelligence needs mountains of data, where is the Chinese regime getting the huge amounts needed to run its applications? One source is TikTok. People using TikTok don't convey classified data or sensitive data uh, or the kinds of things that we usually think about when we think about people stealing secrets, right, or getting, getting information about an antagonist. Now, what good is all this data about dancing teens and other content on TikTok really doing the Chinese regime? What it does do is provide more data, more information about how Americans behave and how, how TikTok users and their friends and their likes and dislikes all feed into an overall picture of what Americans are doing and about how Americans and uh, uh, Americans make decisions and and where the, where the stress points are in American society that China needs to be aware of. And AI runs on data. The more, the better, whether classified or not. These are the kinds of things that make AI uh, a useful tool. So if you can speed that process up, make it process even more data faster, that's a big advantage, particularly if you're using AI for strategic purposes. And that's exactly what the Chinese have been doing for the last decade. You know, they have set their sights on becoming the first AI-driven national surveillance state in which all, virtually every organ of government and society is either driven by or overseen by artificial intelligence applications. So for the Chinese, getting access to these chips is hugely important. Given the importance of these AI chips, what can be done? Herman offers up a two-pronged approach. Number one is we've got to alert our allies also to this problem and make sure that, that when we do sell uh, AI chips to them and to other countries, that the end user doesn't wind up being China. As for the next step... The second requirement, I think, that we really need to address in this is to think about our own AI policy. That's because whether we like it or not, AI is here to stay. I mean, AI is a, it's a, it's an ever-present technology now. Everybody's got programs. Everybody's got companies that work in the AI, in the AI space today. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here. Our full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow. Presenting the heritage of traditional Chinese martial arts, promoting martial ethics, and reviving the true tradition. The 2022 NTD International Traditional Chinese Martial Arts Competition Preliminaries will be held in New York and Taiwan. On August 28th, the finals will be broadcast live online worldwide. Registration hotline 188-477-9228. For more information, please visit martialarts.ntdtv.com.